There, the numbers are rolling. Hello, again. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Again, please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. When do these things be so? Okay? Read along with me, because guess what? I make mistakes. And the mouth will go quicker than the brain. So, am I on me? <laughs> I was recently sent a video by a beloved brother which was talking about how they found apparently the Ark of the Covenant and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah yeah man through their science falsely so called especially these wicked atheists Man will eventually, I believe, <laughs> catch up to Scripture. Um, they will. Um, you know, atheists like to say that the Scriptures aren't scientific. It's like, dude, you're, you're crazy. Yes, they are. But man, I believe, will eventually, sooner or later, catch up to the Scripture. Unfortunately, I do think it will be too late for the majority of them. But mankind will eventually catch up to Scripture. What do I mean? For example, Noah's Ark. Okay? Noah's Ark. I personally do believe that the remnants of the Ark are to this day still findable on the Mount of Arat. Okay? Uh, I used to, I didn't check before I started recording, I used to have a video where the guys were talking about, you know, people bringing down these pieces of wood, and they did that soap and foulness carbon dating, which is a joke in and of itself. Yeah, two pieces of the same specimen give two differing years, okay? But, I personally believe that yes, the remnant of the Ark, Noah's Ark, can still to this day be found on the Mount of Arat. Well, why haven't we heard anything about it? Well, you can find videos where people have brought back pieces of wood uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a very treacherous kind of thing and the, the seasons play into it and whatnot. But I do personally believe that, yeah, the Ark of Noah is still on the mountain there to be found. I personally believe people have found it. Then why, didn't we, then why haven't we heard about it? Very simple. If it, has been, if it were be, to become a big news thing, like if you see it on fake news or communist news network, um, that would be what? Well, Noah's Ark was found. That would be, hey, if Noah's Ark is found on the mountains of Arat, like the scripture saith, what else does the scripture say that proved to be true? It's like, um, Mount Sinai, Jabal El Laws. Okay, now that there is a video, and uh, then I will write that down because of an example. Mount Sinai, okay? Catholicism says that there's one Mount Sinai with the, what is it, St. Catherine's Monastery at the bottom of it? That's not the real Mount Sinai. The real Mount Sinai is in Arabia, in modern day Turkey, and the video, uh, that'll be in the description box. But they, the Turkish government has it uh, fenced off. And if someone trespasses, guess what? I think they'll get shot. Why is that? Because they have photographs of the top of Mount Sinai, Jabal El Laws, as it is called, that is burnt. And when you read in Exodus, the Lord descended on, in a fire on the top of Mount Sinai. So if they allowed people to inspect Jabal El Laws, who knows what they would find, thus proving the scripture true. And if you prove the scripture true about Noah's Ark and about Jabal El Laws, well, what else could be true, right? And the thing about, you know, um, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? That, you know, that there is evidence out there 
that could suggest, hey, this is where actual, yes, the, the tomb where uh, Jesus was laid. Uh, you can find st information on that, historically proving that. Just like I mentioned, uh, if you really wanted to look, you can find in Roman antiquity, you can find that there are records that says Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Okay? The place of a skull. Absolutely. These things can be verified, demonstrable, and provable. Stuff like that. Okay? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. But see, when it comes to the Ark of the Covenant, that's a little different. That's a little different. Why? We're going to explain. We're going to look at that. Okay? But, again, like I said, think about that. Think about that, brother. Saints of the Church of the Living God, think about it. If you saw on uh, whatever your local news station is, or read about it in the paper, uh, uh, Noah's Ark found. The real Mount Sinai. The Red Sea crossing. That one, um, that one, there was, um, um, there was a place because Catholicism says that they crossed one way. Scripture tells you they crossed another way. But um, I don't know where to find this. But apparently where the children of Israel crossed, it was a more shallow point. Where, they, uh, where the Lord parted the waters, okay? There is actual scientific evidence that could, be that could be used to prove that, hey, yes, the children of Israel passed through the, the Red Sea with the mountain with the walls of water, okay? All right? There's some kind of thing about that. I, I, I don't know where to find that, okay? But see, these kind of things can be proven. You look in a Hebraic antiquity and records, I'm sure, you'll be you know, the place of a skull. Absolutely. Like I said, in Roman antiquity, they kept fastidious uh, things, okay? Yet you could find that, yes, in Roman antiquity, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. Okay? You can find that. But see, the Ark of the Covenant is a little different. Why so? Let's examine that. Now, we're not going to look up the word Ark in and of itself because the word Ark appears before the Ark of the Covenant, like the Ark Noah's Ark. Uh, Moses was in an Ark of Bulrushes, okay? Or something like that, okay? But the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Testimony, okay? Exodus chapter 25, verses 10 under verse 22, all right? Exodus 25, verses 10 under verse 22. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. Uh, and this is what we're looking at here, too. Um, God is very specific. Very specific. Okay, you read about this stuff in Exodus. Down to the minute detail. Okay, but yet God's not specific about salvation. About the walk that we are to walk as ambassadors for Christ. You need a break, dude. Yeah, God's very specific. Let's continue. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be borne with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat. Nope, mercy seat. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. 
Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. But God isn't specific. Shut up. Okay? <clears throat> and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. Of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to, one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. Pay attention. And there I will meet with thee. Very important about the significance of the ark of the covenant. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. And in Exodus 26, verse 34. Exodus 26, verse 34. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place, the mercy seat. And when we just saw in Exodus chapter 25, verse 22, and there I will meet with thee. The ark of the covenant was very significant in the dispensation of the Old Testament. The Ark of the Covenant comes around during the law is given, uh, the Ten Commandments is given in Exodus 20, or what, uh, 20 or 22, which one is it? Which one is it? Uh, yeah, it's in Exodus 20, okay? All right, the law is given, and then the Ark is there, is made for that kind of stuff. But the Lord will meet with them on the mercy seat that is on the Ark. Here's the significance of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant comes into play during the giving of the law. Under the dispensation of the law, it was faith and works. Your faith was in God that he would honor you by keeping the law. Also, Mr. Sleazy Believest Devil, under the law, eternal security was not there. God was not a permanent resident within the believer as he is today in this dispensation. It was not by grace through faith under the law. It was faith and works. You could lose your salvation because it was not because it was faith and works. Okay? All right? So, with Without, being, without the permanent seal of the Lord under the law, the mercy seat, the object of where the Lord is, the significance of the temple. Okay, Why is that? Because unlike today, God dwelleth in temples made without hands. Today, you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him. You call upon his name and he saves you. He seals you, once saved, always saved, until the day of redemption. God dwells within you permanently. You can't lose what is, it's, you can't lose what's not yours. It's his salvation. Under the law, that was not there. Okay? Okay? Hence, the significance of the Ark of the Covenant. Look at verse 22 again. And there I will meet with thee. There I will meet with thee. You take your little pen. You get your little sharpie or whatever. You mark that. When it comes to this topic. Okay? And there I will meet with thee. And I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubims. Which are upon the Ark of the Testimony. 
of all things which I will of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Okay? It's like uh, when the Lord says, um, where two or three are there, there I am in the midst. Okay? Uh, that was said before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? All right? Today, the Lord dwells within us. Okay? So that doctrinally doesn't really work. Okay? Because when the Lord said that, uh, where two or three together are gathered together, there I am in the midst. But today, we who are saved, we have the Lord within us. How does that work? Oh, could it be that he was making reference for something of another dispensation before the law and also during the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> See, this ties down, ties back to what? Rightly dividing. Yeah, yeah, rightly dividing. Okay, on the thing about James too. Okay? Okay. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 37. Exodus chapter 37. And here's another thing that I gotta mention. God is very specific. You got these um these Christians who say, Well, you're being too extreme. Oh, God, God's not specific. Uh, there's gray. No, there isn't gray area in Scripture. There's just things you don't want to accept. Okay? The minute you start saying that the Scripture is silent on something, then you are saying what? The Scripture isn't sufficient! Good luck with that, buddy! I've seen a certain individual and individuals try to cling to that without even actually saying that, tiptoeing on that, to defend their paganism. If the scripture is silent on something, then it, is it totally sufficient in all areas of faith and practice? No! You watch out for those guys who say stuff like that in order to justify paganism. But see, the scriptures is, are very specific. Very specific. It is possible. You, we have uh, uh, Exodus 37, verse 1 on to verse 9. Okay? Come on. And be... I forget what that means. I, I, I forget. Be Zalil made the Ark of Shittim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. This is him actually. God gave the specific dimensions, the specific ooh, <laughs> excuse me, things for the making of the Ark of the Covenant. Here's the making of it, okay? And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast forth four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon the one side of it, and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made the staffs of Shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staffs into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof, and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims of gold, beaten out of one piece, made he them, on the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub on the end, one cherub on the end, on this side, and another cherub on the other end, on that side. Out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim spread out their wings on high, and covered with their wings over the mercy seat, with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seat word, were the faces of the cherubims be. Cher of the cherubims, excuse me. We have specific measurements, documentation, and specifics about the Ark of the Covenant. It is very possible that man can make a duplicate fake 
arc of the 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 hopeful thumbnail for this video is going to be from that blasphemous movie uh, Indiana Jones and the or a uh, Raider of the Lost Ark. Hopefully that will be the thumbnail for this. Um, that's probably a pretty close rendition to what the Ark of the Covenant actually looked like. The point is, okay, they find the Ark of the Covenant. Let's just say, no, they find it. Number one, why isn't it big news? Well, if it was the actual Ark of the Covenant and they found it, well, what else is Scripture right about? And Satan doesn't want that. But, in Exodus 25 and in Exodus 37, clear, specific measurements, dimensions, and such and such about the ark itself. It is very possible, more, more like more probable, that man can make a counterfeit ark and parade that around as being the actual ark. We have the specifics. But God's not specific, right? <laughs> so keep that in mind. We found the Ark of the Covenant. How do you know it's the real one? You got, like I said, you got the dimensions. You got it right here. You got it right there. Well, let's look a little bit more about this Ark of the Covenant, okay? And its significance. It came in during the dispensation of the law. Okay? Under the law. In a dispensation where God was not a permanent resident. They had to go to temples under the law. He was above the mercy seat. Okay? Yes, he appeared otherwise, but if you turn, you go in that direction, you're trying to justify something. So go away. Okay? There's a dispensational difference there. Okay? Numbers chapter 10. Verses 33 on to verse 36. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. Yes. Why is that? Because of the mercy seat. He would meet uh, Moses and also Joshua uh, coming up. Uh, uh, that's where he would manifest. Yes, he would manifest. He, he appeared to Jacob um, uh, and uh, judges to Gideon. Yes, yes, yes. But the, as far as the ark, that was the purpose of it. Okay? And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. Okay? And also Numbers 14, verses 40 unto verse 45. This is after the blunder of where the Lord said to go do something and they blew it, which was supposed to be uh, the video that was to be today, but no, had to, this, praise the Lord, this comes first, okay? Um, this was after the children of Israel blew it, and they, that one was passed, and now they, they have to go into the wilderness. But they still tried to go do what he said when that, that, that moment passed. Like tears in the rain. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up onto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. It's like, dude, you blew that chance. That was a one-time one opportunity. Yes, another time would come. But for that generation, you read the scriptures, looks what happens. See, and God will sometimes give us opportunities. Sometimes we blow it and we won't get another one like that. Okay? But that's another rabbit trail. Alright? Alright? Moses is like, 
You blew it. You blew it. Don't go. You're, it's vanity. Okay? You're peeing against the wind. It's no good. Come on. But pride, which you addressed in the previous video. Verse 42. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But <laughs> the Lord hath not sent you thee to say, Go not into Egypt. But no, Baruch, the son of Neriah, said the Theon against us. Yeah. But they presumed to go up onto the hilltop. They went anyway. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp, so the Lord wasn't with them, obviously. And that Ark was an actual physical representation. Okay? The Ark more so than the Tabernacle of Testimony, which would become the actual temple. Okay? In a dispensation which was faith and works, where eternal security was not there. See, this is also a very good proof against these wicked, sleazy believers that say it was uh, once saved, always saved, throughout the entire... No, they're lying to you guys. Stay away from these devils. Okay? But they presumed to go up onto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Am Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in, dwelt in that hill, and smote them and discomfited them even unto Horma. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 9. At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, when he broke the ta uh, tables uh, when he saw what the children of Israel were doing, worshiping the golden calf, which they said were their gods. Hmm. Gods, more than one at least, and one calf. Oh, it sounds like that satanic, <coughs> blasphemous trinity. Hmm. Yeah. At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood, and I will write the tables, the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in my hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me. And I turned myself and came down from the mount, and put the tables in the ark which he had made, and there they be, as the Lord commanded. And the children of Israel took their journey from Beersheba, of the children of Shachan, to Moserah. From Moserah, there Aaron died, and there he was buried. And Eleazar his son ministered in the priest's office in his death. From thence they journeyed unto Gudgoda, and from Gudgoda to Jotbath, a land of rivers of waters. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi, very important, to bear the ark. That's going to come into play later. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister unto him, to bless in his name unto this day. In a dispensation where a priest was necessary. The Catholic Jesuit priest, no. The priesthood of the believer. We can go to the Lord himself, the Father, personally, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? More specificity. The Lord specifically, the tribe of Levi. But Christianity today is like, eh, the Lord's not specific. <laughs> Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. 
The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. Okay? Okay? More specificity. Okay? Now, in the book of Joshua, you also read about the ark and the significance of the ark. Uh, read Joshua chapter 3 on your own time. We're not going to read that. But Joshua chapter 6, verses 4 on to verse 13. Joshua chapter 6, verses 4 on to verse 13. Okay? Jericho. And the significance of the ark again. And seven priests shall bear shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests, and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Again, specificity. Okay? Watch out for people who say, Well, the Lord doesn't care. That, you know, there's things Scripture is silent on. If that's the case, then Scripture isn't sufficient. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord, and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests with that blew with the trumpets, and the rear and the rearward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with trumpet with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about at once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Okay? And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went up continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, but the rear ward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets the significance of the Lord and of the ark and the, the purpose of the ark under the dispensation of the law where there was no eternal security, okay, and it was faith and works. And they needed, they, they were, God uh, was in temples and stuff like that. God was not a permanent resident. Not once saved, always saved. Okay, he was not a permanent resident within the believer under the dispensation of the law. Okay? And also now in Samuel. Samuel, you on your own time, read 1 Samuel chapters 4, 5, 6, and 7 about how uh, the Israel who was backsliding tried to use the ark, but uh, they got defeated and Eli and his sons died and whatnot, and the Philistines took the ark and the Lord just wreaked havoc on them. There's a video where we talk about um, about that, um, the Philistines and the Ark. Uh, I, I can't remember offhand. But anyway, um, the Philistines were plagued because of the Ark. Okay? All right? And it was so bad that the Philistines, in order to protect their knowingly false god because of Dagon, they put the ark by Dagon and Dagon fell down on his face and all that was left was like his head or something like his palms or something like that. 
Okay? But even the Philistines was like, hey, we got to protect our false god in the light of the true god. So they get rid of the ark and they give uh, 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 golden mice and emeralds and stuff like that. Okay? All right? Very significant. In a dispensation, without eternal security. Okay? Without eternal security, in a dispensation of faith and works. Where temples were required. Okay? wasn't like today. But in 2 Samuel chapter 6, 2 Samuel chapter 6, okay? 2 Samuel chapter 6, where are you going? We want verses 6 on to verse 11. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 11. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Yuza put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Now, that's where the Lord would meet before the people. And we have already seen that the Lord specifically, specifically said, only the Levites should take care of the ark and stuff like that. You read the context on your own time here in 2 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, David done messed up. They made a cart for the ark. And it was, we already looked at it, the Levites were the ones sanctified to carry the ark. Specifically, David went against that. Okay? And when they came to Nahon's threshing floor, Yuza put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Doing, doing the right thing, the wrong way. Doing the right thing against the specific instruction of the Lord. Kind of like booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way. Okay? And because this, because they were doing this the wrong way, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Yuza, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. Yuza was not doing anything maliciously. He wasn't. He, he thought he was helping. But see, the Lord gave specific instructions which were not followed. And the ark is where he would descend on the mercy seat and meet with like Moses, Joshua, that kind of thing. Okay? In a dispensation where there was no eternal security, God was not dwelling in you permanently, it was not once saved, always saved, the death, burial, and resurrection didn't happen, it was faith and works. See? And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Yuza, and he called the name of that place Perez Yuza to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So, well, why don't you do it the Lord's way? See, God is very specific, people. Today, he has made a very plain and specific. You want his grace? You want his forgiveness? you got to go the way he said, the way he's called, the way of the cross. Broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. But no, just believe. Believe in me. No! God specifically has laid out the way of the cross. Well, how many boot the door out of the way? Hmm? Hmm. Anyway, let's continue. So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obed, Edom and all his household. Now, in First Chronicles chapter 15, First Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now, we just saw David was trying to do the right thing, but the wrong way. So many people don't want to go the way of the cross, so they put the door out of the way, thinking they're doing the right thing, but they're going about the wrong way. God is specific. God is a God of specificity. Okay? And when you go against that, okay? 
First Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1 and verse 3. And David made him houses in the city of David, and prepared a place for the ark of God, and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. And we already looked at that. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place which he had prepared for. So now he was doing it the right way as before. He was doing it a different way. He was doing the right thing the wrong way. And see, that's what Satan does with all these uh, daughters of the Hua. Trying to obtain something the wrong way. And God is specific, brethren. Okay? Th this, this little video there, brother, um, has, a has a whole lot more to do with just what you brought up to me. Praise the Lord for it. I love you. Psalm 132. Psalm 132. Psalm 132. We want verses 1 on 2. I can't read my writing. <laughs> Psalm 132. One on the verse 10. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob, Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to mine eyes, or slumber to mine eyelids, until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation of the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou and the Ark of thy strength. Ark of thy strength. Look at Joshua. Okay? Look at what happened with the Philistines. Use up. Okay? Let thy priests, the Levites, be clothed with righteousness and let them shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Now, some interesting facts about this. You don't read about the Ark of the Covenant in uh, Proverbs, Isaiah, but you do hear about it in Jeremiah. And here's where the significant thing is. Here is why if they found the actual the actual Ark of the Covenant. We are going to see. That would be contrary to Scripture. But let's say if they did. Even in contradiction to Scripture. Let's say they did. That would do only what? Prove this right. But as we have also seen. The God of Specificity. That might be the name of this video. The God of Specificity gave specific directions, uh, whatever, on how to make, what to make the Ark of the Covenant of. Like I said, the, the thumbnail hopefully will be for the Raiders of the Lark Stark, where they, and I believe that's an actual, uh, very close rendition of what it actually looked like. The Ark of the Covenant was synonymous also with the law. Today, we're not under the law for salvation. Lost people are under the law because that's what they're going to be judged by, absolutely. Absolutely, but you don't have to keep the law today to be saved, do you? Hence, and today, when you come to the Lord on His terms, you know, you don't boot the door, you don't make a cart to do what God, to carry what God ordained certain people to do otherwise. See how this ties in? If they found the actual, the actual Ark of the Covenant, that would be contradiction to Scripture. But you don't read about it in Isaiah. You see about it in Jeremiah. Okay? 
Jeremiah chapter 3. You don't read about it in any of the fall uh, and other of the other prophets. But you do read about it in another thing that is falsely by Catholics referred to scripture. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 19. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. And say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord. And I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you. And I will take you one of, a, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with understanding. And it shall come to pass, pay attention, and it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall no more they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord don't look at me look at the scripture neither shall it come to mind neither shall they remember it neither shall they visit it neither shall that be done anymore Keep reading. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord after his second coming. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of, it, of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and thou shalt not turn away from me. Verse, look at, don't look at me, look at the scripture. Verse 16 here is very significant. The dispensational thing plays in big time, baby. Why is the ark not... Look at verse 16. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, in those days sat the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, Neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Why? For especially speaking about this dispensation, God dwelleth not in temples made with hands, but he dwells within us. See, the Ark of the Covenant served a specific purpose within a specific dispensation. But here's the thing. You talk to some Hebraic Jews, true Jews, um, they will tell you, some have, that, well, we know exactly where the Ark of the Covenant actually is. Do you? You know where, the, where there are sources for that? Hmm? Right there. Right there, verse 16, is very specific. But there are some Hebraic Jews that say, well, we know exactly where it's at. And you got people saying they found it? No. Well, I'm sure they might have found something. Was it the true Ark of the Covenant? If it is, then we got a problem here. 
But like I said, some of the Hebraic Jews, when uh, talked about, they said, well, we know exactly where it is. Where do they get that, though, from? In 2 Maccabees, we have to read this. 2 Maccabees chapter 2. The Apocrypha is not scripture. It is not inspired. It contradicts the established canon of scripture. In the book of Ecclesiasticus especially, okay, you can find all the majority of the the, the majority of Catholic doctrine within the Apocrypha. Uh, uh, look at Tobit, uh, justifying paganism, worship of uh, and stuff like that, and witchcraft. Okay. Also, the offering of prayers for the dead. Where do the Catholics go? They go to Maccabees. Satan's Church, Roman Catholicism bases the majority of their doctrines off of things in the Apocrypha. So, when you have something that people are basing it off of on something known to be fraudulent, <laughs> warning, 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 warning. But here, here it is. 2 Maccabees chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 7. It is also found in the records that Jeremy the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take the fire as it hath been signified. And how that the prophet having, having given them the law charged them not to forget the commandments of the Lord and that they would not err, err in their minds. When they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. And with other such speeches exhorted he them that the law should not perish from their hearts. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet, being warned of God, commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God. And when Jeremy, here it is, came thither, he found a hollow cave wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar in of incense and so stopped the door. Now I have heard Hebraic Jews say, well, it's under uh, where, um, under where the, uh, in, uh, in the mounts or something like that. But right there, they say, well, we know where it is. It's hidden somewhere. And this is what they will go to. And it's interesting, too, because the Hebraic Jews reject the Apocrypha, but yet they will use it to justify. It's like, well, we know where it's at. Do you? And see, right there is contradiction. Well, bread, it's like it's in Jeremiah, and it says, Jeremy, yes, but it would not come into mind. This is bringing it up into mind again. And the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Maccabees has the same dude dying like three or four times. Okay? The Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Okay? Yes! The Maccabean Revolt is made mention of because, yes, the Maccabean Revolt was an actual historic thing that happened. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And if anything of the Apocrypha that the Hebraic Jews will uh, adhere to at least is Maccabees because it's about the Maccabean Revolt. Okay? This is what they cling to. And it's a clear contradiction of Scripture. Okay? And some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it. Which when Jeremy perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that God gather his people again together and receive them unto mercy. Now, when it comes to mentioning of the Ark of the Covenant, 
You see in, and now we're, we're not going to look at these, like the Ark of Noah, you see mentioned in Matthew, Luke, Hebrews 11, 7, and 1 Peter 3, uh, 20. Those are mentions of Ark, Noah's Ark. Like in Matthew 24, verse 38, Luke 17, 27. Look these up on your own. Hebrews 11, 7, 1 Peter 3, 20. That mentions an ark, but that's reference unto Noah's ark. Want to know something interesting? Ark is not mentioned at all in the Pauline epistles. It isn't. I wonder why. Uh, if you're one who wants to say that the book of Hebrews is a, a part is a Pauline epistle, that Paul was the author of it. Mm. But what, whatever, in the known, because remember, in the ones that are attributed to Paul, personally, he always identifies himself. Don't lose the sight of what we're talking about by going off in a rabbit trail about the book of Hebrews. We know who is the author of the book of Hebrews, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I don't believe that he used Paul to pen it. Okay? I don't. But that's a side thing. That's... That's insignificant to the fact that the Lord is the author of it. Okay, you do not see the ark mentioned at all during the Paul under the Pauline epistles. Why? Because the ark served a specific purpose in the dispensation under the law, where it was faith and works, no eternal security, no one saved always saved. God didn't dwell in. And people permanently, but he would go to buildings and, and also uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? But interestingly enough, in Hebrews chapter 9, and the book of Hebrews, and here's a clue. The book of Hebrews is written for who? Come on. The Hebraic Jews. For them during the time of Jacob's trouble. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend, it's reverting back to faith and works. The only ones that have eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Excuse me. No, the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. They're the only ones who have eternal security sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, it's going to revert back to faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. These wicked, sleazy be uh, believers, fake grace or devils lie to you. They say they're dispensational, but they say it's from, by grace through faith from beginning to end. They're lying to you and damning you people to hell. Okay? But, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 5. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, after the redemption of the purchased possession, begins the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works. Don't let anyone deceive you. I say, it's by grace through faith, faith alone. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's lying to you. Then, verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which, call, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod and that buttered and the tables of the covenant. All symbolic for things of the other dispensation. And during the time of Jacob's, uh, Jacob's trouble, it's a revert back to faith and works as similar to under the law. But see, the blood of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection has already been there. But see, with the change of the dispensation changes salvation. Okay? Watch out for these sleazy believists. Watch out for these non-dispensational Christians. The devils. Okay? 
and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. See, the book of Hebrews is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And like I said, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going back to faith and works. These are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. What's their faith in? That he's going to come back. Today, what is our faith in? It's finished. During the law, what was their faith in? God would honor them by doing what? Keeping the law. See how this works? Revelation chapter 11. And, here, and here's the nail in the coffin. Okay. Revelation chapter 11. Has man found the actual real Ark of the Covenant today? No! They haven't! If they did, then that would be contrary to Scripture. You don't see a mention of the Ark at all in the Pauline epistles. They did not find the real Ark of the Covenant today. No. That is it. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the place of the skull, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, Noah's Ark, yeah. Those differ from the specific thing that the Ark of the Covenant was. Not to mention, specifically for the Jews, during the dispensation of the law, you get it? They did not find the Ark of the Covenant. They, okay, oh, they may have a picture of it? We got specifics. They can make a counterfeit. They didn't find the real Ark of the Covenant. No way. They did. Then it's contrary to this. Revelation chapter 11. Verses 14 on to verse 19. The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Or oh, incidentally, this is the only time that the ark is mentioned in the book of Revelation. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, anointed one. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was, and was, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Pay attention. Where is actually the Ark of the Testimony? Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant. Where is it in reality? You don't see it mentioned in the Pauline epistles. You see that one reference to it in uh, Hebrews. Why is that? We've already discussed that in Jeremiah chapter three, verses twelve and nineteen are pretty specific. Uh, Maccabees is a lie. Well, what if they do have a... It ain't the real Ark of the Covenant. Verse 19. And the temple of God was opened... Don't look at me. In heaven? Doesn't say kingdom of heaven, does it? And there was seen in his temple... The ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an, ark, or and an earthquake and great, uh, great hail. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. That's specific. Yes, there's a third rebuilt temple during the time of Jacob's trouble. The third rebuilt temple is never destroyed. But that you can't get away from. Temple of God opened in heaven. 
And yes, you can make the thing about uh, there's no temple, uh, you know, uh, in heaven in the later parts of Revelation. Yes, but you can't get away from that. Temple in heaven. And this temple that is in heaven. And remember, this is after the redemption of the purchased possession. This is during the time of Jacob's trouble before the second coming. The Ark of the Covenant is not on earth. The Ark of the Covenant is not on earth. According to this and according to what we have seen. If they come out that they found something, it's not the real Ark of the Covenant. Or else, it's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. They did not find the actual Ark of the Covenant. They did, then, then, what are we, then what are we reading this one? We have seen. They have, because of scripture, specific detail. They can make a counterfeit. Go back to Hebrews chapter 9. Let's finish this with Hebrews 9 verses 6 on to verse 18. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went, uh, went the high priest alone once every year on, in, on Yom Kippur, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while well, as the first tabernacle was yet standing which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Yes, under the law they had to continually offer animal sacrifice until the Lord offered the perfect sacrifice, hence opening the way to heaven. which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of the Protestant Reformation? <laughs> until the time of Reformation. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Yes, brother. Under the law, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the way to heaven was not opened. They went to Abraham's bosom. We talked about that. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called the cross might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. A time, you wicked devil. When did the New Testament begin? Oh, at the Council of Nicaea, you're lost. You're a wicked devil. You and them two broads of yours. Okay? The New Testament began with the death of the testator. You need to rightly divide the word of truth. Oh yeah. Rightly dividing the word of truth has a lot to do with this. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. 
where, whereupon neither the First Testament was dedicated without, whereupon neither the First Testament was dedicated without blood. There's no, I, there's no way, there's no way that the actual Ark of the Covenant has been found. There's no way. Okay. If they found something, it's a counterfeit. Or else it's in contradiction with this, on which one has more sway. Very fascinating thing to consider. Because again, let's let's say, let's say they actually found the actual real Ark of the Covenant that's in heaven right now. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's say they found that. Well, then that would just prove what that the Scripture was right. What else would that prove? Huh? Let's see. When it comes to the specific, the specificity of the Ark of the Covenant. No, brother. They didn't find the Ark of the Covenant. No, they didn't. If they did, then this isn't true. That is going to be it for this little video. Fascinating, fascinating thing to consider. Fascinating. But they, they, no. If, if they found the actual, actual Ark of the Covenant, the one that Yuza touched. The one that circled Jericho. Then that's not true. So, that's going to be it for this video. Got a lot of upload. Not a lot. Just two videos to do. It's going to take a while to do. So that's going to be it, it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. I'll see you in the next video.